Hello everyone, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this video I want to give you an introduction to sedimentary rocks with a look at the composition and classification of this type of rocks. First of all, we'll find out that there are clastic, organic, and chemical sedimentary rocks. We'll take a look at each. The clastic are made of finer particles, the organic, formerly living things, and the chemical are deposited through chemical processes. So let's dive in. Clastic sedimentary rocks are composed of smaller particles that have been cemented together by other minerals. It's worth taking a look at sediment sizes, because the different sediment sizes will tell us what kind of sedimentary rock we may end up with. So we look at the common types of sediment down at the bottom, sand, silt, and clay, are all quite small. But it's also worth noting that there's gravel, which is about the size of golf balls, cobbles, about the size of softballs, and boulders are larger than a volleyball. So let's take a look at what types of rocks these will form. The gravel may form either a conglomerate or a breccia. Rounded gravel fragments will form a conglomerate. The sharp and angular gravel fragments will form a breccia. Sand will form sandstone. Silt will form siltstone, also sometimes referred to as mudstone. And clay-sized particles, the finest particles of all, will form shale. You'll notice in these two images, both the siltstone and the shale show fossils. The particle size of this type of rock is often good for preserving plant and animal fossils. Let's take a look at each type of rock with a few bigger examples. Starting out with some conglomerate, here's a natural sea arch of conglomerate at Pescadero, California. On close inspection, you can see that it is made of large round gravel fragments, this some of them up to cobble sized. Another well-known conglomerate is the Maroon Formation. This boulder was found around Crested Butte, Colorado. You can see the round gravel fragments are embedded in the much larger rock. Breccias, composed of sharp angular gravel fragments, are often found in volcanic or fault-prone regions. This is a particularly beautiful example of a cobble-sized breccia in Mosaic Canyon in Death Valley National Park. Another example from Death Valley is in Titus Canyon, where there are some particularly large boulder-sized breccias. Of course, the sediment sand will form sandstone. Here we see a fine example of cross-bedded sandstone in Zion National Park. And you can clearly see from the inset image that this is made of sand-sized particles. Finer than sandstones, we'll find the siltstones or mudstones. Here's an example of some mudstones from the Pecan Formation near Gulf, North Carolina. This particular rock unit preserves numerous cycad and fern fossils from the Triassic period approximately 200 million years ago. The finest particle size sediment is clay that will form shale, such as these examples of thinly bedded shales in the Florissant Quarry in Colorado. The very fine particle size often results in exquisite preservation. In this case, a robber fly insect is well preserved in the fine shales. The Llewellyn Formation shales of St. Clair, Pennsylvania are well known for excellent fern fossils. These fossils date from approximately 305 million years ago. Organic, or sometimes referred to biochemical sedimentary rocks, are composed of the remains of formerly living plants and animals. Often, these are composed of carbon or shell material. Let's take a look at some examples. Of course, the best example of the carbon-based organic sedimentary rock is coal. This is actual plant material that has been compressed and formed into rock. In the larger image, you can see the horizontal black layer above my head. This is a large coal seam in Sharon, West Virginia. The inset is just a close-up of what the coal looks like. The shell-based organic sedimentary rocks are often made out of the mineral calcite, Here's a fine example of marine limestone from Aurora, North Carolina. This is from the Castle Hain Formation. We can clearly see the excellent preservation of clam shells in this marine limestone. Another common shell-based rock sort of fits the category of clastic as well as organic. Coquina is made of cemented shell fragments. It's fairly common to find a piece of coquina on the beach. This sample coming from Emerald Isle, North Carolina. Corals are another shell-based or calcium-based organic sedimentary rock. In the larger picture, we can see some living corals in the waters just off of the large island of Hawaii. 
The hand sample shows a few examples of dead coral, which is just the calcium carbonate remains of what was the living animal. The final type of shell-based organic sedimentary rocks are composed of silicates rather than calcium carbonate. The sedimentary rock chert is formed from diatoms. In the microscope image in the upper left, you can see several examples of recent diatoms. Diatoms may fall to the bottom of the ocean or lake floor. They may compact and cement together to form the sedimentary rock chert, such as in the two hand samples below. Chemical sedimentary rocks occur when minerals deposit through either evaporation or other chemical and thermal processes. Two major types of chemical sedimentary rocks include the evaporites and precipitates. Let's take a look at each. Evaporites occur when minerals are dissolved in water, then the water evaporates, leaving the minerals behind. This image shows me out in bad water in Death Valley National Park. Nearly 280 feet below sea level, this is the floor of the former inland sea or Lake Manly. Since this lake had no outlet to the ocean, it became very salty, and eventually when it evaporated, the salt was left behind. If we take a look up close, we can see the cubic crystals that are characteristic of the mineral halite. Another good example of an evaporite are the gypsum crystals that can be found on the Great Salt Plain near Jet, Oklahoma. This is known as hourglass selenite gypsum crystals with sand inclusions in the unique hourglass pattern. Also from Oklahoma, there's the unique area near Noble where the barite or rose rocks can be found. These are uniquely twinned crystals of barium sulfate, and they're very common in a small area near Lake Thunderbird. Another truly unique example of evaporates may be found in Devil's Golf Course in Death Valley National Park. Very unique and jagged halite crystals are left from the evaporation of Lake Manly. Stalactites and stalagmites and other cave speleothems are also evaporites. Mineral-rich water dripping down from the ceiling may form the long stalactites or build up on the floor as stalagmites. As the water evaporates, the minerals are deposited and left behind. Helictites are a particularly unique type of speleothem. These helictites are found in Scott's Hollow Caves in West Virginia. Rather than growing vertically down from the ceiling or up from the floor of the cave, they can grow horizontally or at unique and strange angles. Unlike evaporites, precipitates form when chemicals are dissolved in water and they precipitate due to chemical and thermal processes. The tufa is a unique type of limestone. The water of Mona Lake is highly saline and rich in many minerals. When spring water enters the lake, it reacts and precipitates the calcium carbonate in the large structures known as tufa towers. Another common precipitate in areas around geothermal areas are travertine precipitates. Near Mammoth Hot Springs in Yellowstone National Park, we can see large buildups of travertine as the mineral-rich water springs to the surface from this volcanic region. A particularly unique and odd type of precipitate may be found in the sands around Antelope Island on Great Salt Lake in Utah. Upon close inspection of the sand under a microscope, we see that the sand grains are not fragments of rock, but rather round egg-like structures, thus the name ooids. These form from the chemical precipitation of the limestone from the mineral-rich water. Finally, with silica-rich water, sometimes quartz may precipitate out in cavities in rocks. Often in limestone, or sometimes in volcanic regions, geodes may form when quartz and other mineral crystals line the inside of a cavity. Although not a complete list, this gives us a sample of some of the common types of sedimentary rock and their general classifications. With the clastic, which are rocks of smaller fragments cemented together, the organic or biochemical, which are made of formerly living things, and the chemical evaporates and precipitates, which have typically been deposited by water in unique circumstances. Thanks for watching, and I hope you join me again on another Earth Science video.